Hey there, welcome back to Nier Automata. We're still spelunking. I must go if I remember right, spelunky's like a roguelite? Roguelite? I, th I think it might be. Oh god, that's getting way closer than I like. Hmm. Well, you'll have a chance to back up now. Oh, why not? It would be nice if you could hack into the big boy right in front of you. It would be nice. If I didn't keep running into other ones, I would love to do that. But he saw you. Because it would be glorious if you could just sneak hack one of them. No such luck it seems. If you would run away, would you reset their aggro? Uh, far enough away, sure. I don't know how far that is, though. Hmm. Oh, God. Freaking air walls hate so much. Did you just say air wall? No. I think that's everything. Because air wall sounds like a Boku no Hero quirk. Well, I mean, there's that guy that has the ability to create solidified air from the from what he breathes. I think that's solid air. That's what I mean. Like you can create an air wall, then, doesn't it? Hmm. Kind of. There is a shortcut. Woohoo! Right. Go up and go up and save. Yeah. Well, I'm not going any further in here, because at the ah. end of that section is uh, is where we need to go for the prerequisite, and it's also where we meet a very scary enemy to get to that thing. Uh, define scary. Uh, you're looking at a really high level on him, or... Oh. Like 80, I want to say, and we are definitely not leveled enough to deal with that. Okay. Now we'll go save. And then we can all be happy. Except for 9S. Well, 9S is never happy at this point. He's just a miserable little child crying. Alright, I think I, I can get I, a... No, I can't. I forget where it was, but on some show somewhere, I saw that somebody's guitar was an actual axe. Yeah, that's not Did... anything new. Uh, yeah. But, like, since... Axe is slang for guitar sometimes in some circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people so have having... ones that look like that. Report. Mail mail. received from access point. Well, I'm gonna go look at my mail first. This is very important. Maybe Tubi left me a message. Dear 9S, if you get this message, means that I am dead. It's a meal. Please buy my shit. <laughs> Welcome. Why is it so speed up? Why shouldn't it be? Yeah, nothing. I remember actually finding the lyrics to this. You did. Like... You sent it to me. Also, bargain day. Ah. <laughs> huh. 
No, buy my silk. <laughs> buy my silk, or else you will cry. Yeah, the more I looked into that, the more I'm starting to think I don't know if those are official lyrics or fan lyrics. <laughs> but it sounds like it was recorded from the game. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like Emil would be nope, wrong way. that self-serving, like, hey, buy my shit. I mean, he did. He sent us an email that said that before. So why are you saying those are just fan lyrics then? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Hey, friend, thanks for stopping by. You into fishing at all? For a while, I ate whatever I could get my hands on just to survive, so I actually know a fair bit about the art of angling. So today, I decided to let you in on some juicy info. So, different areas have different fishing spots. As a rule, you don't usually, uh, you're usually going to find freshwater fish in rivers and saltwater fish in the sea. Oh, and you can also catch things like starfish and horseshoe crabs in shoals. But if you're looking for a huge catch, you need to aim for the depths. The ponds of boiling oil in the desert are usually filled with machine fish, and most of what you'll find in pipes buried across the world is plain old garbage. But if you keep at it, you just might f pull up something good. And finally, if you're looking for rare fish, there are some exotic fish that you can shake a s- uh, there are more exotic fish than you can shake a sick at in the subterranean lake near where I live. That's just a quick zip and zoom away from the city ruins. Well, that's it, I think. Later! Uh, there, there's your hint of like, hey, fish in the sewers, you could find that iron pipe weapon. Not to mention just fishing in general makes you a lot of money. Yeah. I think quick save's still right. Nope. Oh well. The only thing that would keep me from doing is checking the email. Are we ready yeah. for the tower? Um... Would you say it would be good before you enter the tower? I mean, to save? I mean, the only thing we would miss is me getting that email, because we saved already. Oh, okay, okay, I must have missed that. I saved at the bottom of that hole over here behind the tower. Okay, okay. So we're, we're good. I just don't want us to lose too much progress. Yeah, we won't. Onwards to... That doesn't like me! What an asshole. So onwards to the end of the game. To the tower. Although I'm assuming. Do I still have to hack this thing or no? Is this done? No, I still have to hack this thing. Uh, although I'm assuming the tower is end game throughout sea. Huh. Game for this? I don't know, we'll see, won't we? Because you said CDE takes about as much time as A and B did. I believe this is our sixth stream of route CDE? Well, they did and say this is a launching platform, so who knows where it launches us to, maybe? Oh. 
And A and B took, I believe, seven Alert. each. Enemy caution level rising. Uh oh. Cause is most likely concern over Unit 9S gaining access to tower. Oh. Out of my way! They aren't happy I'm trying to get in here. Damn it! They won't stop coming! Oh, whoops. I thought you were dead. Uh... <laughs> bow chicka bow wow. Alert. Allied signal detected. Allies? The oh, twins! You? 9S? We've been expecting you. <clears throat> The two of us will take things from here. You need to open the door to the tower. Devola? Popola? What are you doing here? Remember your promise? What are you talking about? Come on, Nines. Hack in while you can. None of this makes any sense. We'll explain everything once we're inside. <sighs> Uh, I think you might have to hack the tower. Now. Oh, I know. We've oh, this, you're, you're just, just farming. Well, that's part of it. Also, I think there's an ending to be had here. Oh. And it's in one of two ways. One is this. Two, there's another option a little bit later. You need to hack the tower lock open. No. Look at all this good money. Plus, look at slaughtering these things. Look at all this money and materials. That you lose. You know what? It's true, but if this gets an ending one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is an ending. Oh, okay. Like that line of dialogue tells me right there, this is an ending. A bad ending. It's always a good ending. I don't know if it's done by time limit or amount of enemies killed, though. Oh. decided not to hack the tower in order to help Devil and Popola. It was a nice thought, but they all ended up getting killed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's your V what? ending. Reckless bravery. What? <laughs> Overrun. <laughs> <Ha. laughs> yeah, I didn't remember if it was um 
If it was continuing to fight, or if it was hack the tower open and then just leave. Whoops. Wrong one. Meant to continue. Yeah, I didn't remember mm. if it was that one or just walk away after you open the door. It was one of the two. I couldn't remember which. Oh. Um, but yeah, once we got that dialogue, I'm like, oh, yep, this is this is the one. It's this one. You know, oh, that's right. I didn't get the mail yet because it hasn't popped until we get up here near the tower, I think. Yeah. I'll probably just ignore the mail for now. It's fine. Okay. There it is. Report. Mail notification received from access to Just gotta rehab these. Heck, I could just go ahead and help Devil and Popola for a while and just, you know, gain levels and fun stuff like that. Y yeah. And then hack the tower. At least for a little bit. I I was actually going to suggest helping them out just a little bit. That, that yeah, it, it's worth it for the money and the unlock, like the materials, I think. But I'll focus on hacking the tower and then I'll stop before we actually get, get it done. That way, um, mm -hmm. it, while it does drain slowly over time when you're not hacking it, we should be able to at least get some bang for our buck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was unlocked the whole time. I could have just ignored all those things. Oops. Eh. But we already didn't lock them. Yep. Well, it, it forced me back out like it didn't do that. Ah. Uh, because it hadn't fully unlocked the tower at that point. It took some time. Mm. Wow, that zoomed out. Yeah. I think I'm doing it in a funky order and it's being weird about it. Huh. Is it glitching? Because Devil and Popola should have shown up by now. Uh, uh. Ah, there they go. Damn it! They won't stop coming. There's the box. Okay. Alert! Allied signal detected. Allies. Yep. The cute redheads are gonna fight. Oh! Uh, Beat uh, that asses. I know they're twins, twins the but I think I prefer the straight-haired one. On, That's fine. Uh, I believe can. I've said it before. No, I like Devola. Sense. I like the, no, the wavy-haired one. <sighs> yeah, I forget which one has which personality. If, like, the straight-haired one is the more bubbly one. Uh, she's the nicer one, yeah. Devola's a bit more rough around the edges. Uh, she, she's your, like... Next. Mordred Light. Alright, I'll hack. I'll hack alright. I'll hack a robot. How's that? Or I'll die. Oh, oh, 
And, um, since we're doing the evolutionary girl Utina the movie on brand new discussed anime this week, uh, I, enemy caution level rising. I listened caution to the English dub the of the movie, and, um, it, it can be interesting for you to try to think what her English voice actress sounds like. Mm -hmm. Although it doesn't sound exactly like it, because it's more of a older character, but she's voiced by we Rachel Lillis, we, we who is missing for Pokemon. There it is. Got it. So I can detect hints of Misty in her voice, but... Is it, like, original Misty or later Misty? Original. Okay. No! Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Interesting how he's just sending you back with everything already clear. Yeah, kind of surprising. This is interesting. All right. Oh, what's this barrier? Analysis. It's part of a closed defensive system. Well, how do I break it down? Hypothesis. Unit 9S could permit its self-consciousness data to lose control. The resulting um, energy... If you want to break it down, maybe you should do up the base. I was going to say you should get a stand. Maybe. What happened? It's the barrier. Popola! No, don't! You can't do anything! The wall's got a self Enough. algorithm! Enough! Devil and I, we have to atone for our sins no matter what! But if you do that, your circuits will... Devil! Right. Devila! I hope you don't regret this. Oh. Oh. Dad. Mm -hmm. At least the good one lived. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Alert. The data recovery uh, data records discovered for units Devila and Popola. Do you wish to open this data now? Do we want to learn more about the twins? Uh, sure. A dusty wind kisses my cheeks. Buried in the sand, we press forward, one step at a time. We have nowhere else to go, after all. Because our models, the Devila and Popola models, are defective. Defective? Record transition in... Record. Transitions in the project's initial phase. When first we woke, there were still people. They had flesh, egos, emotions, souls, and they issued a single order. Function as observers of Project Gestalt. This is the sole mission of the twin Devila and Popola models. It is the only reason we exist at all. We were the latest models. Er, we were the latest model. Though many, though many companions shared our appearance. There was a sparkle in all of our eyes, a sense of pride at having been entrusted with humanity's future. And yes, there was anxiety as well. But we existed as a pair. We shared a destiny's we shared destiny's burden as a pair, and because of that, all hesitation was swept away. Each pair was given their own cities as obser observation areas. We were ordered to guide the replicants with our own hands. All for the sake of the promised time 
that one day would arrive. We were the only ones who could handle such a duty. We were observers, after all. Uh, watch out! Deva staggers and falls in soft yet unforgiving sand. I hurry to her side and sigh with relief when I find she's not seriously hurt. You all right? Sorry, sis. Guess I spaced out there for a bit. She smiles, the same wry smile I know so well, as she rubs absently at her leg. It's wrapped in a white bandage. Your bandage is coming undone. Here, let me change it. It's all right, Popola. Come on. We have to get going before we lose the light. We won't be going anywhere if the sand gets into that thing. Now quit whining and hold still. I'll be quick. Divla grunts and turns away. I take it as consent. Soon, we're resting in the shade of a nearby rock as I pull the bandage free. Artificial skin, torn and bloodied, peeks out from beneath the bandage. Judging by, uh, by Devila's current lack of ambulatory control, I imagine the circuitry, uh, circuitry underneath has been damaged as well. Taking a deep breath, I... Oh, check the circuitry to see if it can be repaired. As expected, wiring and nerve circuitry has been damaged. Replacing it will require new connectors, as well as some tools. None of which is easy to find in a desert. Sorry, but sorry about this, sis. Dev letters Devila. The wry smile again. It kills me every time. Don't you dare apologize, I respond. You've done nothing wrong. I calmly change the bandage, trying not to let my worry show. I make it as tight as possible so no sand can slip inside. And all I can it's all I can do until I get the proper materials. Now that's going to be a tall order, considering our current condition. Is this a text adventure now? Text story, but you know, close enough. I'm sorry, sister. Okay, now you're apologizing. We both apologize while insisting the other's apology isn't necessary. It's kind of funny in a way. Such a trivial exchange under such circumstances. We laugh together and the sound echoes across the desert before being stolen by the cool evening wind. Report regarding the increase in relapses. There is... There has to be some way to prevent relapses. Divla's sharp voice echoes through the private quarters. You must, you must be quiet, sister. The replicants will hear. Pfft. They wouldn't understand even if they did. It might be true, but regardless. Annoyed at my hesitation, Devla crosses her legs and scowls. The Black Scrawl took another victim today, she says. That's three this month, and it's spreading way too fast. Let's wait a bit and see what happens. I'm tired of hearing you say that. Her shout makes me jump just a little, but enough for her to notice. Seeing that, her eyes suddenly open wide. I'm sorry, sis. I, It's not your fault. I shouldn't have lashed out at you like that. It's okay. I understand. It's all going wrong. You feel it too, right? I... When I was first assigned to Project Gestalt, I was over the moon with pride. But now, my chest hurts just thinking about it. If it were to fail... Before we knew it, the replicants had gained a sense of self, and the Black Scrawl started raging out of control. It moved fast. So fast. Like a wind. Popola and I would go to the observation room and act like it was all okay. Yeah, we'd talk to the replicants, as if we didn't have a care in the world, but at night, we just hold each other and share the horror of it all. I'm glad you're with me, murmurs Popola. I couldn't have handled being an observer alone. We were able to endure because we had each other, I reply softly. Did the humans see this coming? Is this why they made a twin model? Are they really so clever? Are they really so cruel? I couldn't have done this by myself. I would have descended into madness. 
I simply couldn't bear such a burden all alone. When I get the chance, I'm going to try contacting another city, she says. Maybe these abnormalities are a localized phenomenon. I pray that's the case, I reply. Even if we're of no use ourselves, things will still work out if the other observers can pull through. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. But it wasn't okay. Nothing was okay. All thanks to a pair of Devil and Popola models from another town. The wind rubs my cheek. The sand grazes my skin. It's grown cold out here. We walk with renewed purpose, hoping to make up for lost time. Devla loses her balance every now and then. Gets bad after a while. I slip myself under her arm so she won't fall again, and we press on. Is your leg alright? Well, I doubt I'll be dancing anytime soon, but yeah, it's fine. She smiles as if to say this. Ahem. She smiles as she says this, but I can tell she doesn't have much left, and yet she continues to smile. Also, I won't worry. I remember when our resistance allies injured her leg. I was furious, beyond fury. I wanted to scream and cry and lose myself in it, but then she smiled. All that rage just drifted away. To think I have the same face, and yet such different smiles. One day I realized how she reminded me of the martyrs I'd seen in old records. That was the day I decided to leave our town forever. Record with Project Gestalt's end. Our role as observers ended on the day Project Gestalt collapsed. All due to the actions of Devla and Popola models from another town. With the original Gestalt lost, humanity was doomed to an inevitable extinction. Knowing this, we gathered our remaining replicant data that we could find and launched it to the surface of the moon. And though success was as unlikely as finding a lost grain of sand in the desert, we still had to attempt it. We still had to try. We were androids, you see. Protecting humanity was our instinct. Other androids, beholden to the same instinct, began to direct their hate at the Devil and Popola models, who snuffed out humanity. It started small, a few offhand remarks, the occasional glance, but even the smallest things have weight. And with enough of them combined, what weight eventually wouldn't become a boulder? Emotions boiled over. Remarks became jeers. Soon enough, my sister and I were the perfect target for persecution. At first, we simply accepted the fact that our friends turned on us. It was almost unavoidable, I suppose. We were observers of Project Gestalt, after all. While we didn't cause it to fail, the people who did, well, they looked just like us. So we accepted it. We took the resentment and scorn, and we, we, endured, we, we endured it. Because as crazy as it sounds, I think we actually felt responsible. We moved from town to town in an effort to avoid persecution. But in one such town, my seemingly infinite patience finally broke. My sister, Devila, met with unprovoked violence at the hands of a resistance member. She said something in response to his taunts. Something quiet. And though her words were ambiguous, he slashed her leg nearly in two. Mm. My vision narrowed. Everything went red, and then she smiled at me. It's okay, sis. There's nothing we can do. But it was too late. My emotions were no longer in control. I'm simply not strong enough to stand aside and let the most important person in the world come to harm. Devil and I left that same uh, left town that same day. Violence like that wouldn't stop. It was going to happen again. And it would be and it wouldn't be coming from just one person. So rather than let them ki let them kill us, we ran. I guess it was the greatest resistance I could muster. We lose the sun as the dark clouds gather overhead. We continue our march. The cold wind blasts us, stealing what little body heat we have left. I smell rain in the air. We continue our march. 
Sometimes we hear animals howling in the distance. It makes us flinch every time. But we continue our march, because even this is better than suffering at the hands of our fellow androids. I must be suffer this persecution. I know we're the same model as the androids who doomed humanity, so I understand that part. At least a little, anyway. But at the same time, we're not them. We're not the same. We are who we are, and that devil and Popola are who they are, or who they were. That's how I felt when I saw Devola being hurt. I wanted to shout it at everyone. I wanted to scream. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one Devola. And for her, there's only me. No one can take the other's place. Rain falls from the sky. It stimulates our senses, our sensation nerves like cold needles. We, see, we need maintenance badly. But that's a pipe dream, I suppose. No android would dare help a pair of outcasts like us. Are you cold, Devola? I'm alright, as long as you're with me, sis. I feel the same. We press our bodies together and try to retain heat. It's cold now. Much worse than the searing heat of the midday. But we just smile at each other and keep pressing on. There's another camp on the other side of the desert. A new camp. If we can just get there, we can finally fix Devola's leg. And yet I wonder if there if there's anywhere on the planet that will take us. Hey, what's wrong? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. I do what I can to suppress the anxiety in my chest and keep walking. The rain grows worse. It lashes at us without pause. Is this our punishment? I reach out and... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, support her body. As long as we have bodies to support one another. As long as I have someone with whom I can share my fate. Then I will press on. No matter what happens to me. Because I won't ever stop protecting her. I won't stop. No one stops. For that is the fate. We twin androids have been assigned. Now, were those choices I made within this meaningful? It slightly changes the story a little bit. Um, other than that, no. Hmm. The failure to manage the area resulted in the collapse of project of the of the Gestalt system, which led to the decimation of the human race. Due to the discovery of its instability, the twin system was removed uh, from future android production designs. Following the incident, the Devla and Popola models were not dismantled. However, in order to prevent further unexpected behavior, they underwent a memory wipe. Furthermore, they were reprogrammed to generate constant feelings of guilt. That is all that remains from their personal record during the era in which they were referred to as administrators. I see. Query. Um. Why do the androids Devola and Popola seem to prefer death over surviving alone? There was a very high probability that at least one could I... have escaped. I hope you never have to understand. Affirmative. Um. N next time on Near Automata. Why does this tower possess an entrance at all? Uh, all material transport takes place via aerial vehicles. It is irrational for an infiltration route to be so easily accessible. Hypothesis: Entrance is a trap. Um, is it a trap? We'll find out on the next episode of Near Automata. Yep, we can save right now though. Save. Yes.